thank you, Mr. Shailesh Kumar, for uh, giving me this opportunity to explain about our uh, presentation in the Aero India 2023. What we are showcasing here is the new uh, Amka cockpit. This is the fifth generation fighter cockpit, and we have put the simulator here. Uh, we are showcasing basically the advanced technology in avionics and weapon systems which we are going to incorporate in this uh, AMCA uh, aircraft. What we are seeing here is a replica of the AMCA cockpit and a replica of the uh, displays and the outside window imagery and the capability of the system. Here what we are trying to focus is the new technologies that we are bringing into the AMCA aircraft. Basically, we wanted to uh, reduce the cycle time because now the development, the speed of development is a uh, very critical uh, uh, attribute which depends, which uh, determines the success of a project. So here what we are seeing here is a cockpit where uh, we are simulating the uh, avionics of uh, the AMCA. We, are, uh, pro we have already crossed the uh, CDR phase of AMCA in the project. We are waiting for the sanctions to happen in AMCA, but uh, the metal cutting has already started for the AMCA aircraft. Uh, we are hopeful that in, within a very short time span, uh, following the Mark II, we will be able to bring this aircraft uh, uh, to first flight. And then the technologies which are here in this particular aircraft is the fifth generation. Avionics is playing a very key role in this. The sensors, the weapon systems of AMCA is of a different magnitude as compared to the earlier generation aircraft. In addition to the capability, we have to also see that the stealth capability is always maintained. So the normal sensors which we put in the other aircraft, we cannot uh, straight away take it here. We have to see that it is uh, having the uh, stealth as the primary focus and the capability as the other aircraft without losing any of this capability. So this will be the uh, fully fifth generation aircraft with uh, a uh, high amount of stealth. This will be the natural progression from the Mark II and then we also will have a naval version of this which is a twin engine deck based fighter aircraft. So here uh, apart from that in this particular show we are trying to show you the technologies which are behind the uh, AMCA aircraft which will actually speed up the development. Okay. So, this is a uh, head-up display symbology which you are seeing with the outside window imagery which is generated and uh, you can see the pilot now uh, actually wearing a uh, XR uh, display. So when he is flying, he will see the actual cockpit, he can see all his controls in real time but outside window he will be seeing 360 degrees view of a virtual world. Okay. As though he is flying, if he looks down he will see the ground, if he looks up he can see the targets and when a target is simulated in the aircraft, he will see it in 3D, 360 degrees field of view. That means even if a missile is coming to you from backside, if he looks at that, he can see it, he can see the radar lock onto that particular target. Uh, so these technologies are being done first time. The world is also only catching up on this. You would probably say that on this particular technology we are at par with the rest of the world. In fact, the companies which are making this hardware is wanting to tie up with us to actually uh, enhance the capability of these devices to use it for actual uh, flight testing and training. And the cost of the device will significantly come down. So I can say for a ballpark figure, a simulator like this would have costed somewhere around 8 crores without this uh, device. But with this system, it can be one third or even less than that. Wonderful. And, and uh, the conventional systems will not give you a 360 degree field of view. This gives you a 360 degree field of view. Wherever you look, you see the virtual world. And when you look into the cockpit, you see the real world. You can see your hand, you can see your uh, operation of the switches, the buttons, the uh, control stick, but when you look outside, it is a virtual world. It is seamlessly integrated. So you can fly that and see. And when you fly, you will know that the real experience of flying, you will get in there. We are perfecting this technology. Once this technology is perfected, all the simulators which the pilots are using, which are uh, very maintenance, uh, what do you say, costly from the maintenance point of view, because you need to maintain the hardware which is very costly in nature and to keep it up abreast you have to pay annual maintenance 
But with this technology, other than the basic hardware which you buy, everything is in, in built. The software, the outside window user you have, the cockpit, everything is uh, our indigenous. Uh, Sir, uh, as you said that uh, MCA would be stealth, uh, but when we talk of stealth, uh, there are features which are being compromised, uh, particularly in terms of weapons, because hiding weapons is a, a very challenging task. So how are you going to get rid of those challenges and would make AMCA a fifth generation stealth aircraft in true sense? We have two uh, capabilities. One is when you want to have a uh, non-stealth operation, we can have weapons which are hung outside. But that is, uh, it will have a uh, heavy stores carriage, uh, carriage capability. But we have internal weapons. We have an internal weapon bay. So we have a configuration of weapons which can be stored in that, which includes uh, long-range missiles. Uh, th those uh, things will uh, reduce the uh, RCS of the aircraft, and you will have very less uh, RCS. Only when the time you want to actually launch, the uh, bay, weapon bay door will be opened, the weapon will be launched, and it will again close. So from all aspects, whether it is the sensor, whether it is the weapons, whether it is the reflection from the aircraft, whether it is from any other point, everything will be stealth. And the RCS is one of the main concerns when we are developing a sensor, when we are developing a weapon, when we are integrating a weapon, all these uh, things we look at this thing in a great deal of fixing. So, uh, uh, I, I do not know whether you can talk about it, but I have heard that people are working on meta material technology, uh, the invisibility clock. So, uh, can that feature be uh, developed and uh, can be used in making AMCA stealth, stealthy? How feasible is that option in case if you talk, talk, can talk about in public domain, sir? Yeah, actually we uh, have tie up with or DRDO is supporting us in a very big way in material technology. CSIR is uh, uh, also uh, supporting us. In addition to that, private sector is also supporting us. Any lab which has any capability in stealth and material technology are being used for the program. So we make sure that if the technology is available within the country, we use it. If the technology is not available within this country, but it is being uh, offered by anybody else, we absorb that technology, take it to the next level, and use it in this area. So we don't have any hesitation to take the technology from wherever it is available to see that this fifth generation of the has So the next generation, uh, which everyone is talking about, uh, having system uh, integration, the network centricity, uh, the aircraft can talk to the sensors right in the ground, in the air, and even the, uh, with the satellites, and it can talk to uh, the slave drones, drones, motherships, and uh, other various uh, platforms used by army uh, and other services. So people in the world are developing that kind of uh, technology. Is this sixth generation or the would be available in fifth generation itself? It will be available in even Mark II for us. The network technology, which is nothing but the uh, software-defined radio, which will have the interaction with uh, the ground, the other aircraft, with the mothership, or wherever it is, and even with the AVAX, all these are network. Even tapas would be have, yes. can be having, uh, can yes. be uh, used yes. the SD technology. In fact, it can be used to the extent that the uh, one aircraft can be used to target uh, or uh, to sense an uh, enemy aircraft, another aircraft can be used to shoot. So we have various uh, uh, ways in which the network technology can be used. But the basic network technology, which is the software-defined radio which will go into each of these platforms, is there in the fourth generation aircraft itself. And we will be taking it to the next level in the fourth plus and the fifth generation. So coming back to this particular simulator, uh, can you please tell me uh, whether uh, the fighter pilots of, uh, for the Tejas, for other various aircraft used by Indian Air Force, can they also be trained on this particular simulator platform? Yeah, we have this simulator for different purposes. This particular simulator is used as a design platform where the pilot actually flies it and then we assess the workload and he says that this symbology if it is in a different way, it will actually aid the pilot in uh, his combat mission. So we take this simulator in three different levels. One is the basic trainer. The second one is the design as a design platform. Third one is to assess the workload of the pilot. So we are also in tie, uh, tie up with other DRDO labs and uh, uh, people who are having this technology. One is the scenario uh, definition. Like uh, there are labs in DRDO which uh, which knows where the threats are in the enemy territory. So they will be generating the air threats as well as the ground threats, 
and we will actually make the visuals for the pilots to uh, show the actual threats when he is flying and when he actually does that combat mission he will be uh, stressing himself and he will be operating certain switches all those are being recorded by the simulator and a separate team which is looking after the uh, human machine interface will assess the workload of the pilot under those combat stress conditions that will assist us in developing and redefining the switches and the symbology to make his task faster even if it is made a fraction of a second faster that decides the who is the winner in the whole game so at least uh, in 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 terms of having a simulator for fifth generation fighter aircraft we have become completely self reliant completely atmanirbhar can you say that we are have atmanirbhar bharat as far as the simulator is concerned for quite some years now we are taking it to the next level where other people are also uh, aiming to catch up with us we are not now at par with us we are above them we are uh, ahead of ahead others of them in the simulator so can we become uh, you know one of the world leader in in upcoming years in fact many in the earlier uh, defense uh, expo and in the earlier air shows there are various foreign companies which approached us to say that can you take up the simulator job for us we told we are government but we can refer to you people who are actually associated with us to take up this task so we are at par with the world as far as simulators are concerned. such a great achievement uh, just a last uh, motivational uh, message from you because you are a scientist you work with other eminent scientists and uh, you doing great work ada drdo ada ad so so grateful the nation is grateful for your services sir but can you tell us uh, especially to those youngsters who study in schools have not much resources but they dream to serve country to become scientists to become dr kalam to become you know dr subramaniam to become like you what what, what message do you have for them see today we are not a country which only the government sector is doing this type of a business today with the government's open policy there are various startups which are there which are now aiming to grow big at one time i would expect the private industry will be something like uh, the uh, other foreigners who are actually taking the uh, mantle from the government so i feel from uh, now on you will see a lot of people working in the aerospace sector which will take this to the next level even today as i speak i think uh, the uh, uh, speech which prime minister gave today itself is emphasizing on the msme sector to take the defense and aerospace to the next level and you have a lot of opportunity now it is not the same as we had earlier days so today i think you have to look forward to a great opportunity in this sector in this country thank you so much sir it's such a great pleasure to meet you i i hope uh, that people would learn and get motivated out of it and so grateful to you sir thank you so much thank you thank you, thank you for giving me this opportunity